Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I'm so excited. We made it through another week. Praise God. So let's just give God praise. Let's just give him honor. Let's just give him glory this morning. Amen. Come on in. God woke us up this morning. He thought it not robbery to wake us up this morning. Amen. We know that some people didn't wake up this morning, but we're here, right? We're here. We're, we're, we're in our right mind. Amen. You can hear me. You can see me. Praise God. And, and I just thank God for it. All right. So come on in, family. This is Pastor Carolyn, your pastor and purpose pusher of Tears to Breakthrough Ministries and Conference under the spiritual covering of Apostle Felicia Anderson of the House of Healing International. And yes, we are breaking through it together, image bearers. So come on in. And yes, you are an image bearer made in the image and the likeness of God. Therefore, you don't look like what you've been through. Say, I don't look like what I've been through. Grab your mirror and say, I am an image bearer. I bear the image of God. I am a reflection of God in the earth. Amen. I rep him. I represent God. Amen. I am an image bearer. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care how they want to define you and sum you up or put you in a box, but you are an image bearer of God, right? He created you and he created you fearfully and wonderfully, right? You are the image of God. Hey, I'm an image bearer. I am an image bearer. Yes, you are. So come on in, family. This is Friday. And of course, on Fridays, we do our life after abuse slash life after divorce. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I've heard your request. I've gotten your request. I've heard your um uh, thought on wanting to talk about uh, talk more about relationships after divorce, after trauma, after abuse, um, you know, getting remarried and, and, and all of that. So um, if you're new, you may not know, um, or, or you may follow me and may not know, but I, I, I have gone through it. I've, I've divorced, I'm remarried now, very happily remarried, praise God. Um, and so I've gone through divorce, I've gone through abuse. Um, I was in a very abusive marriage at one time um, and um, gone through trauma. So I am speaking to you, you know, from the other side. I, I've, I've been on the side where you are. But now I'm on the other side, praise God. I made it through. I, I, I broke through those, those barriers, amen. I, I, I broke through those walls that, that were put up, you know, that, that was keeping me bound to my past and my, my hurts and my wounds, you know, and, 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 and God healed me, healed me. And God is no respecter of persons. He can heal you too, amen. Listen, I'm telling you, um, it's nice to be on the other side of that. Okay, it's nice to be on the other side. And for those of you who are struggling to get there, I'm here to help you, okay? So today I'm gonna be the, um, reading some um, excerpts from my book, Tears in a Bottle, because this book actually tells, oops, tells my story. I dropped something, I don't know what it was. Um, it tells my story, and I'm going to be reading, um, for those of you who have your copy, I know I dropped my pen, <laughs> for those of you who have your copy, maybe you can read along with me. I'm going to be reading, um, what I did, I lost my thoughts, I dropped my pen, but it, I digress, um, but we're going to be reading the part of Chapter nine, finding your Boaz. I hear it all the time. Girl, I'm looking for my Boaz. I'm looking for my Boaz. Well, first of all, ladies, we don't look for men. Let, let's just start right there and say, as a lady, I don't, I don't have to look for a man. You know, scripture says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So first and foremost, you need to know that you are a good thing. You know, you're, 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 and, and then you need to 
in this season while you're waiting to be found, this is your preparation season. This is your time to prepare yourself for your husband. And if you are a man watching and you're searching, you know, because men are men, you know, men are predators. They 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 like to uh, you know, seek and find, right? <laughs> so um, I don't mean that in a bad way, but you know, men do. They 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 they, they seek out um, to find um, their 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 woman, their their queen. You know, he who finds a wife. So you have to find your wife. In order to find your wife, you have to search, right? And so. Women know that men are searching for you. Your man is searching for you. Your husband is searching for you. Your king is searching for you, right? He's searching for you. So the question is, when he finds you, what is he going to find? What is he going to find when he finds you, right? So today I'm actually talking to kings and queens because uh, in order to be a queen, you need to have a king. In order to be a king, you know you need a queen. Okay, so we need each other. And so, um, yeah, so I've been getting those requests. And so what does it look like after you've been sub sub abused and you've survived abuse and, and you've survived a divorce and now you're at a place where, you know, you may have already met someone, you know, um, and, and if not, hopefully the one you met is the one, is mm -hmm. the one we meet people all the time. Um, but, you know, however, if you know in your heart of hearts you desire to be remarried, I mean, maybe you were never married, but you desire to be married, I believe that that is a desire that God has given you. And so, you know, scripture says that God will give us the desires of our heart. So God is aware that you have a desire to be married. So as women, we have to position ourselves to be found. You know, you, you know, so so you want to be ready. Okay. As a man, you need to have your act together. Okay. So you're not just finding women and 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 put, opening up wounds and causing more damage than good. Right? So um I like I said, I've, I've been married. I was in a very, very abusive marriage. You know, um, domestic violence, like it was like really toxic, really bad. And um, and so I was very wounded for a long time. I was damaged. I'm not even gonna lie. I was a hot mess, damaged. Um, but to make a long story short, <laughs> I am remarried now. But I always knew, even when I was being battered and abused, I always knew in my heart of hearts that I deserved better. I always knew I deserved better. And see, some of you don't think you deserve better, but I'm here to tell you that you deserve better. You deserve better and God has better for you. You deserve better and God has better for you. So let's start right there. Let's just, just say that. Say, I, point to yourself, say, I deserve better and God has better for you me. You deserve better and God has better for you. That means that you don't have to just settle for, for any old thing. Because for a long time, that's what I did. I just settled for any old thing. Any old thing would do. Right? And then so when we're wounded, then we begin to, to attract people who are wounded. And so now you have these two wounded damaged people together. You know, creating more damage. Making the wound even deeper you know so we have to get to a place where we are healed okay and 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 as we go and god god can heal you he can deliver you he can set you free from the bondage of your past you know and so that's what i had to do i had to get to the place where i had to first realize that i was wounded that i was damaged and that i needed god to heal deliver and set me free because for a long time i thought i was okay when i was not Okay, just like some of you think you're okay, but you are not. You think you're ready to get married or remarry. And 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 you're probably not because it's a lot. Marriage is a lot. Marriage is work. Let me tell you something. 
marriage can be so beautiful. I'm telling you, it's amazing. It's beautiful. When it's working, it's beautiful. It's amazing. But when that thing is not working, it can be ugly. It can be horrible. It could be miserable. You could be, I mean, you know, it's like I, I've been there where you drive, you turn the corner and you see that person's car and, and you just get so depressed that you just want to drive off because it's like, I don't even want to deal with this, you know? So you don't want that. So that's why you have to be healed from your past wounds. Um, and so that way you'll be able to attract somebody else who's healed and whole. You don't want to be, and, and I'm not saying that to say you're going to always be perfect. He's going to be perfect. You're going to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. We all have baggage. We all have baggage. We all have, you know, some, um, you know, we, we, we still have stuff. Because, you know, I still got some issues, okay? So you're not going to be perfect, however, but you don't want to be so broken that, you know, you, you're putting up walls and you're always defensive and you can't hold a decent conversation and you're jealous and you're, you're insecure and you, you know, you're just, you're, you're making the new person um, suffer for what somebody did to you in the past. You know, no, you, that's not going to work. So that's not going to work. It's not going to work. So on this Friday, this life after abuse, life after divorce Friday, we're going to talk about what it looks like to get to the other side, to be whole and to attract somebody else who's whole. You know, whole meaning, no, you're not perfect, but you're perfect for each other. You get what I'm saying? No, you're not perfect because you're always going to have some issues, but you're perfect for each other. My husband is not perfect. I am not perfect, but we are perfect for each other. You know what I mean? We, I mean, the love is there. The respect is there. The friendship is there. I'm telling you, there is nothing like being married to your best. My husband and I, we have seen each other. We've seen each other at our, at, 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 at our worst. We've seen it. We've seen each other through depression. He, he helped get me through uh, depression. I'm mean, like, when I was dealing with depression at the divorce, like, he was there, right? And um, and 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 I, even with him, I've 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 you know experienced uh, dealing, helping him through times when he would he was sick, and, and and you know, so so it's not always pretty. It's it's not. It's got to be real with you. It's not always pretty. But if you're not equipped, if you're not um, whole, if you're, if you don't have the capacity to handle it, if you're a fair weather spouse, it's not going to work. So we have to, you know, in this season, while you're single, now is the time for you to get prepared for who God wants to send your way because he's out there because she's out there. But are you prepared? Are you ready? I just want to go ahead and read some things to you. Um, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read our morning post. So if you have not already stopped by the Tears to Break Crew community, our private community, we're private, but we're not exclusive. Stop by and check out our morning post. Okay, so I'm going to read that. And then I'm going to read some excerpts from my book, Tears in a Bottle. You can purchase yours on Amazon.com or BarnesandNobles.com. Um, and... Then we're going to do our We Write the Word segment because we write the word here in this ministry. We read the word. We study the word. We wear the word. We write the word. So I have an apparel line, Image Bears. This is one of my, um, this is this uh, shirt is from my apparel line, this beautiful blouse. Um, image Bears one of, from my Image Bearer collection. Very comfy. You can wear it off the shoulders or you can wear it. It's very comfortable. You can wear it on the shoulders, um, very comfy, very roomy, stretchy. Um, but yes, yeah, so I have an apparel line. I have, you know, we also have mugs. You know, we have um, cosmetics. When I say we, I'm talking about my granddaughter and I, Layla. And each 
time you make a purchase, we have a travel business. Each time you book your travel through us, you're helping us to fund kingdom projects. And 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 what we do is we serve um, nonprofits that support breast cancer awareness and research, um, domestic violence shelters, and some youth-related nonprofits. And so this is sewing into good ground. And I, I thank all of you who do so into this ministry because um, we're doing great things and you're helping so many. So, but we here, we, the point that I'm trying to make is we wear the word, we study the word, we meditate the word, you know, um, this is a word-based ministry. Okay. So according to Genesis 126, you are an image bearer. Amen. And then we do our flawless meditation according to Proverbs 30. God's word is flawless. Say God's word is flawless. God's word is true. God word, God's word is pure. And we can take refuge in it. Amen. So now let me go ahead and read our morning posts. If you have not stopped by, stop by, say good morning, and check out our morning posts. So it says, you can't desire a relationship. And constantly complain that there are no good men or women out there. How many of you do that? You want a man, a good man, you want a good woman, but you're always complaining that they're not out there. Hmm. No, conflict of interest. At that point, your true beliefs contradict what you say. Are you a walking contradiction? Hmm. Are you a walking contradiction? When you want to attract a relationship, make sure your thoughts, words, and actions are surrounding. Don't contradict your desire. Are you looking and feeling your best? Right? Ask, you know, we're journaling. So ask yourself these questions, write these questions down. Are you looking and feeling your best? Is there room in your wardrobe for the new relationship? Mm. Is your camera ready to capture the picture of the new relationship? Mm. Think of the actions you would take in preparation for the relationship and do as many of them as you can. Are you ready to receive or are your actions or lack of them contradicting your desires? Everything has to line up. If you say you want to be married, if it is your heart's desire to be married, your mind, you got to get your mind right. Say, I got to get my mind right because your thoughts and your words must line up with the desire that you have in your heart. Your thoughts, your words must line up with what you have, that desire that you have in your heart, right? You can't say on one hand, there's no good men, there's, there's no good women out there. But then on the other hand, I want a good man and I want a good woman. First, you have to change your mindset. Of course, there are good men everywhere. There's good, I meet good men, I know good men. There are good men out there. There are amazing, powerful women. Yeah, you know, I get excited about the ladies. Yeah. There are beautiful women out there that, that I'm talking about women of substance, right? Men of valor, right? They're out there. But you're not going to attract them with their negative talk with a negative mindset, with the negative verbiage that you spew out your mouth every day, you're just not going to attract them. If anything, you're going to cause them to run off. Okay, so let's start there with aligning our thoughts and words with what we actually want. We want to speak the promises of God and not the problems that we see. I will speak the, pro you know how we do here. We speak the promises of God and not the problems that we see. So yes, there's going to be some obstacles. And it's not going, every day is not going to be perfect, but you have to prepare yourself. And it starts 
with your mindset and then with the words that you allow out of your mouth. Okay. So with that said, let's go to um, my book. I just want to read some things to you and then I'm going to go, then we're going to do our, we write the word. Okay. So I'm going to read, this is chapter nine, finding your Boaz. Okay. Those of you who have your copy, you can follow along with me. It says, I minister to so many lonely single women who wish to be married. My recommendation is to wait for your Boaz. He will find you when you least expect it. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. First, know that you are a good thing. Say, I am a good thing. I am a good thing. Allow God to prepare you for your husband. Those of you who know the Bible know that Ruth patiently waited for her mate. Boaz. Okay. In fact, Ruth was working when Boaz noticed her in the fields. It means you need to be working. You need to be doing something. You need to be on a mission. You need to be, if God called you to uh, ministry, you need to be operating in your ministry gifts. If God called you to become an entrepreneur, you need to be starting that business, right? If God told you to write a book, you need to be writing that book. You need to be, God said, go back to school. You need to be going back to school. You need to be doing some stuff. So when your man sees you, when your king sees you or your queen, you will already be secure and operating in the things that God has called you to do. Amen. Not just sitting around waiting, right? I'm going to read that again. Ruth was working when Boaz noticed her in the field. My advice to you ladies is to not be anxious about anything. Rather, pray that God gives you patience while you are in this season of your life. I am praying for you and I come in agreement with you that God is sending you a godly husband, one that loves you as Christ loves the church. While you are waiting on your Boaz, because you know we're good for saying I'm waiting on my Boaz, I'm waiting for my Boaz, right? While you are waiting on your Boaz, remember not to settle. Now, this is going to be funny to some of you, and this is going to be offensive to others. I'm going to say that again. Um, this is a disclaimer. I put it in the book. It's going to be funny for some of you, but it's going to be offensive to the rest of you. Okay, but I don't care. It's my book, my story. It is what it is, but it's my truth. While you are waiting on your Boaz, Remember not to settle. Too many times we settle for less than God's best. While you are waiting, your responsibility is to perfect your relationship with God. So, so enjoy your singlehood and prepare yourself to be found. That's for the ladies. Prepare yourself to be found. See, I am preparing myself to be found. Because why? Because he who finds a wife finds a good thing. You already know you're a good thing, right? You already know that. Yeah, I already know that. I'm good. I'm a good thing, okay? And so first you need to know that, but then you need to prepare yourself to be found. So that means you need to start working on yourself, okay? We all have room for improvement, all right? Don't be desperate. I'm going to say it again. Don't be desperate. If there is one thing worse than a lonely single person, it is a miserable, lonely, married person, which I was for many years to the point of depression. Now, that's the truth. The irony is that no husband or wife marries with the intention of being isolated from their spouse. 
I suffered years of loneliness and isolation in my previous marriages. So ladies, regardless of what your heart or biological clock says, you do not need to be in a rush to get married. Ask yourself, am I emotionally ready to get married? For all of you who are in a hurry to have a boyfriend or get married, here's a little piece of biblical advice. Ruth patiently waited for her mate, Boaz. While you are waiting on your Boaz, don't settle for any of his bootleg relatives. And here they are. You know who they are. Broke as, lying as, cheating as, dumb as, drunken as, cheap as, locked up as, good for nothing as, lazy as, and especially the abuser, beating your as, mm, wait on your boaz. I told you it's going to be offensive to some and Funny to some. <laughs> I'm good either way, okay? And make sure he respects your eyes. I ain't cussing. Yo, Y-O-A-Z, okay? I have been in relationships with most of the above. After years of shedding tears, God caught each one, and I know now that there is life after loss and I am living life victoriously, praise God. I thank God that he never left me. He was a very present help in my times of trouble. I have comfort in knowing that God can restore that which is broken and change it into something amazing. The Bible teaches that God is no respecter of persons. He did it for me, and I know. He can do it for you too. The enemy knew the plan and purpose that God had for me. And I believe that is why he tried to take me out at an early age so that I would not grow into the spirit-filled and spirit-led woman of God that I have become today. I survived teenage rape, teenage pregnancy, loss of a baby, an abusive marriage, divorce, and being a single parent after divorce. Thank you, Lord, for putting me in my set place, which is in you. I thank you that everything in my life has prepared me for such a time as this. I have the opportunity to minister to women who are broken, abused, and experienced loss. Mm. People often ask this question, if God is a good God, how can he allow all the pain and suffering that is in the world? I'm gonna stop there because then it goes into a whole nother chapter. But listen, if it is your heart's desire to be married, Prepare yourself. And a part of preparing yourself is loving yourself enough to get the help that you need, to get the healing that you need, so you can get the love that you deserve. I'm telling you, I, I've been through it all. And, and I have never been so happy. I mean, it goes so much deeper than that. I'm saying happy, just so that you can kind of sort of relate to what I'm saying or understand what I'm saying. But there's something so beautiful about being married to someone who loves you unconditionally, who cares for you, who, and this, this was something that was so important to me. And those of you who have lived through abuse, and I think a lot of ladies feel this way, but I know for me, this was something that was important to me. I needed someone that would make me feel safe. My husband, my current husband, 
makes me feel so I feel so safe always he's my protector and he shows that every day he covers me right I don't have to worry about anything I don't have to worry about anything and I'm not saying that to say everything's perfect all the time. It's not what I'm saying, but most of the, most of the time, we're good. We're good. And that's what you want. Because in my past relationships, most of the time, it was bad. Most of the time, it was trauma and drama. Most of the time, there was some form of abuse and misuse. Right, so I'm here to tell you there is life after. There's life after abuse. There's life after trauma. There is life after divorce. You need to believe that and receive that today. Say I believe it, and I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now let's go ahead and go over to our we write the word because we write the word. We meditate on the word, but we live in this word. And so basically, what we're doing is we're journaling the word. We journal the word. And so I have posted um, in our Facebook community, I posted the schedule, the scripture schedule. And every day you just look at the schedule of the uh, scripture of the day and you meditate on it and you write it out and journal it out. And then you begin to ask yourself, you know, um, four questions. You know, what does this passage mean? You know, what is this pass? What does this passage passage say? You know, and then, you know, how can you apply that passage to your life, to your to your everyday life, right? And then how can you apply, what will you apply from today's passage, right? Um, and so that's what it's all about. And just grab your journal and start journaling. Start to get, grab your highlighter, your pen, your journal and start journaling. And I'm telling you, once you start doing that and just being quiet and being still and allowing the Holy Spirit to just speak to you and guide you into all truth and not the lies that you've been telling yourself and the lies that others have been telling you and the lies that the world's been telling you, your life will change. Your life will never be the same. Your life will change for the better. Okay? So we're in Exodus. This is day five, February the 5th, day five, Exodus 23, one through nine. Exodus 23, one through nine, and I'm going to read it. And as I'm reading it, I want you to just really be still. Just be still. And as the Holy Spirit is giving you thoughts about the scripture, um, just begin to write them down. Just begin to write them down. Amen. Um, this is the laws, laws of justice and mercy. Laws of justice and mercy. And this is an expanded code of the law of Moses, the you know the Mosaic um, law, right? And so I'm just going to read, and it's basically talking about, you know, not spreading. Don't spread spread rumors. Don't spread gossip. Don't follow the crowd. You know, if you know the truth, I don't know if you've ever gone through uh, jury duty. Right. And so, you know, many times when you go to jury duty, you know, you already have, you know, a preconceived notion about what your what your what the outcome's going to be. And, and that's that's not the way it's supposed to be. You have to actually listen to all of the arguments, you know, before you make a decision. And so um, you know, and then you don't want to then you're not supposed to even talk amongst each other. Um, or any of the witnesses. So there's a lot of laws that apply to becoming a juror, right? Um, and then you're not supposed to let your family member, if, if they heard it on the news and they're saying, oh, I heard about that, you know, on the news and, and giving you thoughts that you shouldn't have because you have to be open to hearing everything, you know, while you're in the courtroom. So that's just an example. So I'm going to read this, um, but I want you to start thinking about because also when I was reading it, God was just showing me um, how this also applies to spreading rumors and, and, and gossip, even if you're sitting listening to it and, and people are you know influencing you against other people. Um, 
you know, don't follow the crowd. See, I will not follow the crowd. You know, like I was saying earlier, how, you know, many times we say we want to be married, but yet we're following the crowd and saying what they say. Oh, there's not enough men, good men in the world. There's not enough good women in the world. You're following the crowd. No, be different. Dare to be different. Dare to have your own thoughts, right? So I'm just going to read it. And as I read it, just be open to what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you through this word today. Amen. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Speak to our hearts. So if we can hear from you, then we'll know what to do. We don't want to go alone. We don't want to go on our own. But let your spirit guide. Let your love abide. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds as we read this word, as we meditate on this word. Speak to our hearts. We receive, we receive, we receive. Say, I receive, say, I receive what you have to say to me through this word. So I'm just going to start reading. Verse 23, one through nine. Do not spread false reports. Do not help a guilty person by being a malicious witness. Do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you get when you give testimony in a lawsuit, do not pervert justice by siding with the crowd. And do not show favoritism to a poor person in a lawsuit. If you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering, wandering off, be sure to return it. I want to stop right there for a second. So you might be saying ox, donkey. Okay, this is Bible talk. <laughs> um, let's take it to this time and this day and time. If you had an argument with somebody or a disagreement with somebody and you happen to see their dog wandering around the neighborhood, don't just let their dog wander. Get their dog, get it to safety, and get their dog back to them because that is an opportunity for reconciliation. God could be using that opportunity for you to reconcile with them. So take their dog, because you know it's their dog, and take it back to them and say, listen, I found your dog. I know we've had some disagreements in the past, but I found your dog wandering, and I'm sure you were looking for her. Or you're looking for him, okay? So if you come across your enemy's ox or donkey, or let's say dog, wandering off, be sure to return it. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you falling down under its load, do not leave it there. Be sure you help them with it. Do not deny justice to your poor people in their lawsuits. Have nothing to do with a false charge and do not put an innocent or honest person to death for I will not acquit the guilty do not accept a bribe or a bribe blinds those who see and twist the words of the innocent verse 9 do not oppress a foreigner you yourself know how it feels to be foreigners because you were foreigners in Egypt. So we want to treat people the way we want to be treated. We all, you know, have and have disagreements with people. There's it's, it's nothing wrong with having a disagreement, but we're grown folks. We should know how to resolve those issues. We should know how to talk them out and not always be offended by something, right? We ought to do right by people. We ought, whether we're in the courtroom, right? Whether we're a witness to an accident, a car accident, like be right, do right by people. Don't gossip. Don't don't go with the flow with the rumors. You know, if you have a friend who you had a disagreement with, but, but, but then the other friend, because they're hanging out, now you're upset with that person. No, we got to grow up. We have to grow up. Amen. And guess what? 
all of that is to help you grow and prepare yourself for your spouse. Yeah, I'm going to get back to that. Because if you can't even handle their relationships, friendships, like I told you, my hubby is my best friend. And yeah, sometimes we have a disagreements. Of course we do. But how do we handle them? That's my best friend. Listen, I got to handle him with care. I can't be like not talking to him for days and days at a time. That's my bestie. Uh-uh, absolutely not. So if, you, if you're if you acting that way with the, the people in, in other relationships, how do you think you're going to act in a marital relationship? God is preparing you. And God is preparing me. So I just want to encourage you in that. Be prepared. Allow God to prepare you for your king or your queen, okay? We got to get our minds right. We have to get our verbiage right. We have to get our relationships right. We have to learn how to love ourselves so that we can know how to love others, right? And we can't be holding grudges against people. We're too grown for that. Stop holding grudges. Be open for reconciliation. And I'm not saying that somebody abuses you or, or hurts you. I'm not talking about that because you don't want to be, don't, don't be, put yourself on harm's way. That's not what I'm talking about. But if you just had a, a silly misunderstanding, because usually that's what it is, especially as women, we, it's the craziest stuff, man, that we hold on to grudge. We, we, I don't even have time to get into all that. But you know what I'm saying. You know, we, we have to do better. We have to do better. But God is preparing you. See, God is preparing me for what's to come. So I need to get it right. I need to get my mind right. I need to get my verbiage right. Right? I need to get my act together. Right? So I pray that this has encouraged you. If you would like to reach me, please do feel free to reach me. Um, I have my contact information here, or you can inbox me. Um, but I would love to talk to you. Uh, God bless you, especially if you need to talk to someone, you know, if you've gone through a divorce, if you've gone through abuse and you're starting over again, I would love to help you with that process, getting to the other side. Okay, God bless you. Be encouraged and not discouraged. And I'll see you next time. God has an amazing plan and purpose for you. Know that. Know that your heavenly daddy has an amazing plan and purpose for you. And I pray above all things, that you will prosper, that you will be in health, even as your soul prospers in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Father God, help us to prepare ourselves to be found. Help us to prepare ourselves, for God, for, for the women, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Help her to know that she is a good thing. I, I just feel right now that some people don't even know that they're a good thing. They just, they just think they... They're, they're nothing. They don't even know their worth. Help them to see their worth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if it's a man watching, Lord God, who desires to have a wife, help him to get himself together so that when he finds her, he will, he will be able to add value to her life. He will be able to add value and not put her back, you know, set her back hurt her, cause her any deeper hurt that she's already gone through, Lord God. So prepare the men to find their wife. Prepare the, the, the woman for her husband. So we're all in a preparation season, Lord God. You're preparing us for what's to Help us to be open-minded. Help us to open our hearts and minds and not be guarded. Lord God, some, I, I just feel right now that some are just so guarded. Mm. God is saying you have to open your heart. You have to open your heart. You have to let your guard down. You want a husband? You have to let your guard down. You're too guarded. He, he he's not the he's not that man that hurt you. He's not. Mm -mm. You gotta let go. You gotta let go. You gotta let go of your past in order to 
for God to prepare you for your future. You got to let go of your past in order for God to prepare you for your future. God bless you. We have a smile upon you. I'll see you next time. You have a blessed and marvelous day. Bye-bye.